How to open your desk and dehumidifier. This particular one is an EcoWare and it's got this knob on top for setting the humidity. It's also got a switch that goes from high setting and low setting. I'd recommend leave it in the low setting. So let's start by the obvious things. Make sure the power is off before opening it and slide out the water drawer, making sure that it's empty in the first place before you even tip it on its side. You may find it useful to put a towel underneath to catch any residual water. So the first thing to open this up, turn it over so that the vents are facing up and let's play hunt the hidden screws. Slide out this. There are two hidden screws here. That's the filter. Clean the filter regularly. Just give it a dust off every so often. The screwdriver I'm using here, it will depend on your dehumidifier. It's a Phillips size two. So we'll pop these screws out. For those of you who have not come across uh, desk and dehumidifiers yet, they have advantages uh, and disadvantages over the compressor ones. They're not as reliable as the compressor ones, but they do have the advantage that they will operate in very low temperature conditions, and uh, they also uh, they are much quieter than the compressor units. So the next hidden screws, swing the handle up, push the little lugs in at the side, and it will lift the handle up a little bit, then at the other side, push that in, slide the thing up, up, and the handle will grudgingly slide out, revealing two more screws. One down there, and one over here. Pop those screws out. Keep the screws in a safe place. The screws might easily come out, so they might stick to a magnetic screwdriver like this, or they may just stay put. There are seven screws in total holding this case together. And a bit of sticky tape in some. Next hidden screw was underneath the water reservoir handle. So you take that one out as well. And then the final two screws are on the bottom. So let's take those out. These are right underneath the unit, uh, over here and over here. On this unit, all the screws match. Uh, it's always a good idea to, to look at the screws you're taking out in other units, just in case they don't match. Okay, okay. Now we're going to turn it over, if I remember rightly, and we're going to lift the lid off like this. Things worthy of note. Often on a new unit you'll have a bit of tape in here and you'll have to reach in from the end and pick that tape off. It's, it's an attempt to stop water drizzling out this seam. Other things worthy of note in this particular unit, it's got a little bit of trim and that just tends to pop out. Uh, so when you're putting it back together again, you'll have to slip this bit of trim back in. So I shall put this down here. This is definitely need a clean. Fortuitously, let, let, let me give you a little walkover of the components. Inside the unit is a drum of material in here, and it's called a descant drum. And it looks like a, a spiral roll of uh, corrugated cardboard. And that's actually coated in a zeolite substance. And when the unit's running, there's a little motor. Let's see if I can find the little motor. There's the little motor. Uh, there's a little motor there that has a cogwheel drive onto the edge of this, and it makes this drum rotate. And most of the time it's rotating through the airflow of this fan. But uh, for part of the rotation, it goes through this segment here like a slice of pizza. And this has the heat elements in it. When it goes through that, there's a fan here that circulates air continually in a channel inside through the heater and then through the condenser unit at the back. And I'll show you the condenser unit. So, uh, let's get this out. To get this out, there are two more screws. There's a screw here. And uh, it might be worth getting a sharpie and just marking uh, the position of these screws just to remind you where they actually go in and out. Because uh, otherwise, you, if you put a screw in the wrong hole, when you try to put the lid back on again, it won't go into too well. If you hear a scraping noise, it's my head hitting off the camera. The other screw is down here. It's in the uh, 
very corner down here. That's not very visible. Let me turn it around to the side. There is the screw. Let's get that one out. And this will hopefully liberate the whole module inside. And there's lots of different brands of these units. That is notable for being a stainless steel screw. I shall put that to the side. That will, that will not stick in the magnetic screw tray. But all these different units tend to have pretty much identical modules inside them. Now to get this one off from here, you may actually have to, in the case of the knob based version, you may have to get a pair of pliers and pull your knob off like this. So just a bit of pressure, the knob has come off. This switch here may have to be removed. Let's remove it anyway. There's no harm in doing that, is there? I shall pop a flat blade screwdriver under here and prise it out. This is where I burst it or something like that. It's very creaky and plasticky. Ugh. This just clips in. It's just got a little couple of lugs that go underneath and very oddly, it's just sort of flip switches underneath that that it actually makes contact with. Now, to lift the unit out, as you lift the unit up, you're going to have to actually pull the plastic out a little bit to let the uh, the knob's shaft go out over there. So now, if we lift this up, ugh, messy. It's all a bit awkward. As we lift it up, the whole interior chassis will come out with its cable. And this chassis here is the bit that seems to be common to most units. You open the units up and it always seems to be a fairly identical unit. Uh, this is the, for if you need to go further technically, uh, this is the humidistat in this one. It's got two little rocker switches, which is quite neat. If you look at them, they're standard little, uh, can I even get this angled right? Standard little rocker power switches in there that are pushed in by these two plungers. So it's actually clicking two rocker switches. If you need to access the electronics in this one, and it's got a surprising amount of electronics, they're underneath this metal cover. Be very careful about the bunches of wires, keeping them together in here if you, if you need to do that. It's rare you'll need to go into the electronics. Let's take the, the Mankey um, water channel off the condenser unit. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take the screw out of each corner of this and lift it out of the unit. This is the bit that the air circulates inside this. First it goes up and then it goes down, if I've got the order right. Uh, yes. So it's pulling through from the heater at the other side, as you'll see, up here in these fins. And it's just plastic down here and then goes circulated through the heater again. And the water condenses in here and uh, then it drips down to the bottom here where it's channeled out the bottom uh, down to the water reservoir. And that is very prone to blocking up. Let me show you this because I will be taking the whole thing off. So there's another four screws out. The screws are fortuitously all the same again. That's nice. The only real difference in the screws for most of the main structural screws here is that some of them are stainless steel uh, where they're prone to uh, water ingress. Right, now I've taken the four screws out of this. This should lift up and carefully, with a little bit of persuasion, it should pop out. And you see all that goo and gunk in there? That was the problem here. It's disgusting. It, it does. This thing needs washed out thoroughly. There's the desk and drum. The heater is on the other side of this. There's a, a random bit of file. Nice. Uh, there are also uh, thermal cutouts. There's a, The two little wires here are going to a little thermal switch, but the... Uh, to the bigger wires, they're going to a thermal fuse. Oh, actually, no, hold on, let's uh, let's uh, restate that. You've got a couple of big wires coming through uh, and a couple of uh, small wires. The small wires are going through a thermal fuse and the other ones are going through uh, other cutouts to actually kill the heaters in the event of uh, this thing stalling and the thing overheating. It shouldn't happen, but it can happen. Okay, next thing to take off is uh, the little water port here that is going to, and this has different size screws. It's got quite a few screws. I shall take it off and then show you what it looks like. If in doubt, just take a picture of everything before you take it apart. 
This is the bit that really where all the gunk forms and it really does need a good clean out every so often. It's always a good idea when you're taking things to bits to take pictures. This incidentally is a little, as the drawer slides in it pushes this back and opens a little water outlet. It's also notable that you can actually put a hose over this but uh, the hose has to be very strictly angled down and that can be put into continuous drain. Which is good, but it won't stop this problem occurring. Are we free? Is there a hidden screw? Is there another hidden screw? Yes, there is. There's a hidden screw under here. That's it off and that is gooey inside. It's very gooey. Uh, so that little manky thing there is the port the water was supposed to run down through. Uh, that's the uh, that's an extra condensation port actually for the the little fan in here that takes the air in from the condenser uh, and then blows it along to the heater block and it's so it's got its own little drain port but this area here where they've put lots of foam round and little ledges they're trying to keep it this is where some of the condensation leaks out the unit and it always ends up just going down the sides of the unit inside and it can make a bit of a a mess in the floor but the biggest problem by far is uh, these little things are water traps and normally the uh, the unit is sitting into these to actually sort of act as a means of letting the water out but stopping the air escaping from in here because it wants to have a continuous circular route. So to avoid that sort of water short circuit they have these little water traps that fill up and then overflow and then find their way out through that channel. Uh, so that is fundamentally how you take this to bits. Is there anything else worth mentioning in here that could cause problems? The biggest problem is water back up into this. After that, the very first ones had major problems with the heaters in here burning out. There's another little switch that kills the uh, signal to electronics. There's another thermal fuse. Um, this whole bit can lift off, but if you have to lift this bit off to actually gain access to stuff under here, take pictures and uh, cut some ties and you have to lift the wiring off the little pegs at the side of this because it actually also kind of acts as a route for the cables to be dressed around the side. See the little fins here that hold those in position and that's the same at both sides. Looks quite messy. Oh there's another thing that can occur. If the motor doesn't spin but it makes humming noises here, the fan motor, uh, primary suspect is this capacitor down here. Let me just check that. It's, got, uh, it's a spade terminal capacitor and its rating is, hold on, do I, have a, do I have a flashlight? Yes, I do. It's bright here, but in the wrong direction. Its rating is one microfarad. It's a one microfarad fan capacitor. And this little transformer, it's for the electronics from this. And that is it. So then once you've done your work, once you've cleaned this all out, Everything happens in reverse, so you just need to watch this video and look at all the steps of how it goes back in. But I would, while it's open, just clean everything out, get all the dirt out of this. And soon it should be back in normal operation. I hope this helps. And also, now you know what's inside a discant dehumidifier and how it works.